eight years ago, Kevin the Hulk Washington ventured into the valley of the beast. And on that day, lightning was captured in a bomb. Once again, the incredible Hulk has ventured into the valley of the beast. A lot of things have happened in those eight years. The old man flatlined five times. I was out of here, gone. And many of you, he wrote me off, said he's done. The fire's gone. He don't have it no more. He ain't what he used to be. I'm not what I used to be. 62 years old. Old man. But I tell you what, I'm still CT motherfucking Fletcher. And we gonna see what would happen that we could do it one more time. What you say about that, ho? time since we shot Hulk Smash 1, but finally, you know, it's been in the work, so it's been eight years, it's been in work for eight years to shoot Hulk Smash 2. Today we're finally doing it, and Kevin wanted to make sure that he got your side of the story in this video. So I'm going to let you take it from here. Um... I guess we can start from the time you moved you moved in uh with my dad when I was living there already. The overall experience of being there was it was hell. It was hell. Like I remember him bringing us to Walmart, kicking out boards. Like, you know, the chopping boards with the handle. Mm. Picking out boards. You know, and he'd be like, nah. That's not thick enough. Mm. And then he'll, he'll find one, he's like, yeah, that's, that's, that's thick right there, I like that. You know, and that's what he would use to, you know, to beat us with. He would uh, put towels in our mouth and scream, make noise, tie us up, you know. And I remember one time, uh, one of the teachers, uh, Kevin, said he was spinning around in his chair. In class, he jumped on him for that. Mm. It's, it's like you know. To be honest with you, the whole while this man was on his earth, I had a, a fear over me that was so powerful. Like I could, I could smell his scent. I could, I could hear his voice, and my mouth would get dry. My hands would start sweating. My feet would start sweating. I remember a situation that happened one time. It was like I was living with my dad before you came to come live with my dad. And um, I remember we had got interim reports. We came home. She's like, Kevin, you know, um, I got poor on one of my things. You think my dad going to get mad? You know, I, I always tried to give him the benefit of the doubt. I was like, you know, maybe he might just, you know, look at it and see where, you know, you're coming from, you know, different schools. It's, it's different, you know. And when he came home that day. He sat down at the table. He was looking at mine. I had very good, very good, 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 excellent, excellent. And he's like, you know, that's my boy. That's what I'm talking about. And um, I remember on this day, he uh, he took your interim report. He looked at it, and he, you know, stared at it. He just started getting, you know, like he was getting, like, built up. And he was like, baby girl, what is this? And you were trying to explain to him that, you know, it's different. The class is a lot harder. It's not what we, you know, were used to on the West Bank. He didn't want to hear it. So I looked at you and I don't know why you did it, but you, you, you got up and you tried to run downstairs. Yeah, and he dragged me by my he, hair he, up the stairs. He ran downstairs and I ran behind him and he grabbed her by her hair. And when he grabbed her by her hair, um, he dragged upstairs and I, 
I mean, I was a complete, I was a complete coward. I, I loved my dad, but I was afraid of him, you know? And I, I watched him drag her upstairs and uh, he bought it in the room. He was tying her up. He, he would put socks in, the, in our mouth and he would tie a, like a rag or bandana around our mouth so people couldn't hear a scream. And I, I, it felt like it was like 20 minutes. You know, he closed the door and I could just hear, you know, like slaps and thumps and, you know, wall and hitting. Kevin, don't you know to this day, at the top of my head, my hair, you know, don't grow right there? I remember when, um, when I was about 12 years old, I had a dream. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought I saw my dad with a gun. I thought and he looked at me, he said, you want some of this? You want to take a place? I said, yes, sir. And he said, you go ahead on. And she left. She went, she went in the living room. And I walked in there. He said, do I need to, do I need to, to put, put a gag in your mouth? I said, no, sir. And uh, he finished me. He finished, he finished me, you know? Me and my sister beds, we had the same room. Our beds were right, right next to each other. And she would reach her hand. And she said, Kevin, you know, even though I know, you know, you, you know, you're not bigger than him, stronger than him. I know he was going to protect me. Come to find out, you know, child my sister had called child protection on my dad. And uh, when they asked me all these questions and they told me who they were, I, I love my dad, you know, from where we lived at with my mom, it was like the projects. And when my dad lived at, you know, it was like the suburbs, you know, nice schools, nice areas. We had, you know, nice clothes and stuff. And we didn't, best of clothes. Best of everything. We didn't, you know, drove to school in Corvettes, you know, things. And, you know, people looked up to him because he was on a TV show, The American Gladiators. And I wanted that. I wanted me and my sister to have the better things, you know, but it was just that part that I didn't like. But I, I looked up to my dad. I wanted to be like him. One day, he slapped me upside my face so hard. His handprint was on side of my face. And um, one of my teachers, the way I was sick, she was like, put your hand down, put your hand down. And I didn't want to put my hand down. I, like, rest my face on my hand. And this particular day, she made me take my hand down. And she knew it. She was like, oh. And then I just started confiding in her. And I would tell her what happened. Well, one day, I got called to the office. And there was a child, child protection lady, and Ms. Anderson was in there, and she was crying. She said, I'm sorry, I can't take it no more. They told me what you had said, and they asked me if it was true. And I was, you know, I was, uh, I was afraid, and I thought I didn't want my dad to get in trouble, even though I knew it was wrong, but I didn't want him to get in trouble, so I denied everything you said. And you asked me when I came home, you say, Kevin, why did you say that? Like, why, did, why didn't you tell him? And I told you, I said, man, you know, even though he's doing that, I, you know, I, I love him. You know, I don't want him to, go, I don't want him to go to jail. I don't want him to get in trouble or nothing like that. He said, but Kevin, he, he's not gonna stop. You know, he's not gonna stop doing this to us. We, you know, and I didn't, I didn't take up for you. And then you end up leaving, and they took you away, and they put you in a, a girls' group home. Cause I was like, something was wrong with me. And I was the problem. She, they, she was, they looked at it that way because I denied everything. I told them that what she said wasn't true. Because I didn't want him to get in trouble. And I didn't want her to go away because I was going to be by myself. We're doing a quick video, man. What do you think of Hope? Man, he a big dude, but you know what, man? I don't want him to have to do I hit you and start running. See, I get in there, I get around the car, like, go on now. Go on now. Hope, get out of the video, man. Oh, man, Merry Christmas to everybody, man. One, two, three, go. You better give him everything you got. Tell him, tell him when you feel power. Say one, Rick. One, <laughs> two, <laughs>
What you gonna do with all these Hulkamaniacs? Stone in the wall, you gonna suck too much pepper. Hey, let's go, let's go. 500 pounds, real quick, all dressed up. Took my chain in. Travis Elementary. I just got finished. Just got finished doing at least what three hours, four hours. I'm sorry, four hours of uh, kids providing some uh, workout tips. Career day. High school is one week. Elementary school is next week. Giving back to the community. You know, representing Dallas, New Orleans. Beautiful place to play. Merry Christmas to y'all. Y'all be good. So I ended up. Uh, packing some of my things. I called my stepdad, uh, Tyrone. He came and picked me up and he took me to uh, the house. When I got to the house, I you know, started telling Tyrone everything. I told him that, you know, you weren't lying. He was like, well, you know, I understand that you're scared and everything, but you know, you, that, girl, that girl been going through a lot of stuff, man, you know? They put in a group home because, of, you know, nobody, nobody stepped up and said nothing. I said, yeah, and I told him why. He said, I understand, you know, we're going to get you some help. And uh, right when me and him was talking, hard knock at the door, I already knew who it was. It was my dad. And uh, he came to the door. Tyrone went and the door. He's, hey, I'm looking for my son. Have you seen Kevin? And Tyrone was like, no, I ain't seen him. And then he was about to leave. He said, well, if, you, if he come here, uh, let his mama know that I'm looking for him. He's like, all right. And he, he was leaving. And when he was leaving, I looked out the window. Right when he was leaving, my mom was pulling up. And my mom was seeing my dad. He was like, what are you doing here? He was like, I'm looking for our son. And she was like, he's supposed to be with you. And uh, he was like, yeah, well, I came home. He wasn't there. Some of his stuff gone. And she was like, OK, well, he ain't here. And then when she walked in, my stepdad was like, hey, Kevin in the back room. She's like, what, what, what is he doing here? She's like, he need to talk to you. Just listen to him. He need to talk to you. And when I tried to talk to her, she, um, she went to, you know, shaking her head. She's like, no, no. Whatever's going on between you and your dad, that's between you and your dad, you know. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to get into that. You know, you and your sister already had some situations and everything. That's too much. It's Christmas time. I'm trying to enjoy my holidays. So she went back outside and told my dad before he pulled up. She said, hey. Kevin's in here. When she told him that, he came back and uh, he, he, uh, my mom opened the door and he seen me. And I was standing there, he's like, come on, you might as well take everything you have, come on, let's go. I don't know what you think you're doing, but you already know, what's, you already know what it is. So come on, get your stuff, let's go back home. And I was like, no, nah, man, I'm not going back with you. And he looked at me like, what? And I said, I'm not going back with you. I'm not. I'm not doing it. And he's like, okay, now, I don't know what you think you're doing right now. And he said, go get your stuff. And I act like I was going to get my stuff. I act like I was grabbing my stuff to walk to the door. And I slammed the door and I locked it. So I dialed 911 and I held the phone and I hung it up. I knew in New Orleans at that time that if you dial 911 and, it'll, and you, you hang up the phone, the police still will come. He was still like trying to, you know, and my mom was like, you know, you're not coming to my house. I'll get him to come to you, but you're not coming to my house. So while that was going on, while they were trying to get me to leave, the police pulled up. He was like, what's going on, you know? And they were talking to him, and then I stepped to the front door, and I told him. I said, my name is Kevin Washington, and um, to my dad, he's been physically abusing me for years, you know? And I tried to show him, you know, and I told him about my sister. I said, my sister's reported it child protection. He talked to him. He told him that it wasn't true. He told him that I was just mad because I was upset because I was punished for Christmas or whatever. They asked my mom 
It's just when well, we don't know what's going on, you are the legal guardian. We can let him stay. It's a Christmas break from school. We can let him stay with you. And, you know, to be working, find out what's going on. My mom told the police and my dad, in front of me and my dad, said, I don't know what's going on between him and his dad, but this is the Christmas holidays. I want to enjoy my holidays. He can't stay here. And the police asked me to come out the house. And they said if I didn't come out the house, that they would arrest me. And I would go to jail. And I told them, well, I want y'all to arrest me. I want to go to jail. In the process of uh, me telling them that, they looked at each It was a male and female officer. They looked at each other and he was like talking to my dad. And he was like, you know, he's going to come with me. He's not going to have his way. He's going to come with me. And I said, I want to go to jail. They said, well, we're not bringing you to jail. You're going to go with your father. Now, whether we bring you to the house or you leave with him, I said, well, I'll if I go, I'll go with y'all. And they still made me leave with him. Mm. And when I got in the car, I grabbed my little bag I had. And when I got in the car, he was quiet at first, and then he started. And then, um, I don't know if you can feel my hands pops. I wet. Yeah. Nervous, man. He, um, he started talking to me, you know, he was like, you think what you did, you think that's, you think that's funny? You know, you think that's something? You think you trying to, what you trying to expose me or something? And I said, no, dad, I love you. He said, you don't love me. He reached over and he punched me inside of my head. He hit the window and I was just balled up and I was crying. And I wanted to tell him, I wanted to tell him, I was like, you know, you don't have to do this, man. You know, you don't have to do this. You know, I just wanted to, I just wanted to be safe. I just wanted to get away. I wanted to get away. And I told him, I said, Dad, please, he said, shut the fuck up. You got nothing to say to me. You just shame me, man. He said, you, you're supposed to be, you know, my son. You just shame me. Try to make me look bad. I said, Dad, I'm, and I tried to speak. He reached over here, here again. And then we finally made it to the house. I, I was quiet. We made it to the house. And when I, um, I um, got out the car, he opened, he went to the door, he opened the door, he held it open, he looked me in my face, and he told me, he said, um, you'd be lucky if you make it through the night. I would love to see you make it through the night tonight. I looked at him, and he said, come on in. And I was like, kind of bracing myself. I knew he was going to hit me. And right when I walked past him, he took his hand and he slapped, slapped me in the back of my head so hard, man. I, like my head hit the stairs and I bounced up. And I bounced up, I was like, and I ran upstairs. When I ran upstairs, I ran in his room. Cause remember he used to keep his guns on his headboard. On his headboard. And I ran and I grabbed, I grabbed one of the guns and I shot it at the ground. Cause I wanted to scare him. I wanted him to just leave, you know, just leave me alone. And I started walking. I started walking to the, um, to walking to the stairs. He said, what was that? And he looked at me, I said, dad, just stop, please, man. And he looked at me, he said, what? He said, what? You think you gonna, you think a gun scared me? And he, he ran up towards me. And when he ran up towards me, I just started shooting. I didn't even think the gun was working. Cause he ran up to me and he ran back down. And then he ran back up. And then he just laid down. And I just ran and I ran and I ran and I ran. And I got to this lady. I got to this lady at house. And I asked her, I said, can I use your phone, ma'am? She let me use the phone. I called my mom. I said, I told her, I said, are you happy? I said, me you enjoy your Christmas. And I kept running. I kept running. Went by a friend of mine's house that night. He let me stay with him until Christmas Day. Christmas Day, we ended up going to the movies. I went to the movies and everybody was just staring at me like, like, what is he doing here? Like, look on their face. And then uh, my uncle, 
my mom's brother seen me at the movie theater. He seen me, he got, kind of grabbed me. He was like walking me away. He was like, man, you all right? I said, yeah, he said, um, you all right? I said, yes, yeah, I'm all right, man, I'm good. He said, you know what happened, right? I said, no, what happened? He said, uh, you with your dad? What your dad? I said, no, nah, man, I don't know what happened. He said, I said, you all right? He said, no, nah, man, your daddy dead. Put my head down. Put my head down. And I just started. Started, started breaking down, man. I broke down. And I just started, you know, just taking, I just took me to the ground. I knew he was. <laughs> he was doing it, man. I knew. I didn't want it to happen, man. <laughs> and I went to stay home for a few days. But still my uncle for a few days. And when I wasn't gonna steal my uncle, he um he told me you can stay with me as long as you want, man. I was watching a TV show that came on that Friday. It was called uh, Fat Fat and all that. It was a um a hip hop show. And when I seen the hip hop show, it uh when I seen the show, it basically was them giving out shots to everybody, and at the end of the show it said rest in peace, Beefmaster. And when I seen that I knew officially what it was. My uncle asked me what I wanted to do. I told him, I said, man, he said, you know, they're gonna be looking for you in a little bit. You might as well just go ahead on and turn yourself in. And I said, yeah, I wanna turn myself in. Cause he said, man, you, you, you didn't do anything wrong, man. And I said, yeah, I just wanna turn myself in. Pastor, my grandmother, we went to the girls group home and uh, um, I stopped to go see my sister. And when she seen me, she ran up to me, she started hugging me. She said, Kevin, you all right? And I said, yeah, I'm all right. And she, I told her what happened. And she didn't, she didn't like, she started like smiling. She gave me a hug. She said, what they gonna do to you? I said, I'm about to turn myself in. She said, Kevin, I don't want nothing to happen. You know, I looked at her, I said, meet you, he gone. She said, yeah, Kevin, I knew you was gonna stop him. And now he can't hurt us no more. You stopped it. <laughs> Turn about something. It was second degree murder. Second degree murder. It took me out of school. It took everything, man. It took my childhood. I came home. And when I came home, I was homeless, man. I went through so much stuff out down in the streets. My sister was a girl in her group home, and I was homeless, I was a bum. Ate out of the garbage can. By myself, I kept waking up, trying to figure out how did I get to that point? How did I get to this point, man? I was good, I was a good son, man. I had his back. I was trying to be there for my sister, man. I just wanted to do right. So they don't know that I lift the whole that weight. I'm fucking mad, man. I've been trying to build myself up ever since God gave me another chance. He took me off the streets. He took me off the streets. Saved my life. My purpose was not to do nothing, to be better than nobody. I just wanted to be bigger and stronger than the person that made us feel weak. <laughs> and I was afraid of him for a long time, but I'm not. I got my children, my sister, she's married, she got her children. People think that strength is how you, how you look when you do a PR, how much you can lift and all this shit. Ain't got nothing to do with that, man. Strength to us is when you go through your worst, your lowest, your, you still find a way to fight through that shit. She know I love her with everything, man. That's my, that's my twin, man. I'm always, and I will always have your back, and I will always protect you. And I won't let nobody hurt you, nobody hurt my children, nobody hurt your children. Nobody. Nobody. That's why I do this shit. That's why I lift weights. That's why I train.
fucking hurt myself so that way nobody can never hurt us. That's what the Hulk is to me. That's my Hulk. You don't know when you and your sister were talking, you do not know, you have no idea how many of those same feelings that you guys were talking about. I, w I wanted to tell your sister why she was talking so many times. Uh, honey, you are not alone. Don't think that this you was the only person that ever went through something like this. And my son, Kevin here, I want you to know that you are not alone. I decided at 16, you were 15, I decided at 16 that I wasn't gonna take it anymore. She's a child protective service. Child protective service came and asked me, do you wanna put your dad in jail? And I'm like, hell yes. But the thing, the only difference between, you said all along, I love my dad, I love my dad. For me, I was not so damn sure. I was, you know, I was like, I hate this motherfucker. So that shows a tremendous heart, even going through all that, you had a bigger heart than me to be able to say, you know, that you love. I want my dad to go under the jail, and all the times when he said that you wished that he wouldn't come home, you wished that it was just something would happen to him, I, my entire childhood was spent making them saying, which I hope this motherfucker get run over by a truck, a bus fall on any motherfucking thing. Just don't come home, no motherfucking more. I spent my whole childhood like that. So and it started to resonate in my, and he wasn't the, she grabbed her hair and pull her up the stairs by her hair. And when my dad uh, break my nose, and I'm in school trying to, you know, cover it up or not act like uh, that was the reason why. And I'm telling her I got in a fight. And because my mom didn't want me to put my dad in jail. You know, I, I like I said at 16, I went out and I got my fucking shotgun and I put it in my trunk of my 67 Chevy. And I said, if the motherfucker touch me again, I told my mama. I said, I, I, I know you love him. I know you love him. But if he come after me again, he ain't gonna make it home for dinner this evening. You ain't gonna see him no more. Now, if you want to, you can tell him where I'm at. And I told her where I was at. I said, I'm gonna be at my girlfriend's house. 141 West Barclay Street. I still remember that. I said, I'm gonna be this where I'm gonna be at. Now, if you want to, you go ahead and send him on over there. He can be pissed off or mad, whatever you want to be. Send him on over there, but he ain't coming back home. And the good Lord must have been speaking to her because he, he popped didn't show up. And I, I ain't come back home for a couple of weeks after that, but I went, hey, I was through. I was done, I was through. So I understand you being fed up and afraid and not wanting, you know, not wanting to take that anymore. I understand every bit of that. I would go see my my dad's grave in New Orleans East. It's, out, it's in New Orleans, it's in New Orleans East. I would go there and I would just break down and cry. But after the last, I want to say last, really when I met you, like when I met you, you know, I went down there and I said, so, I wasn't going down there as frequent. But every time I go in and I see it, I just didn't, I got the total opposite. Stop feeling sorry, I stopped feeling bad, and I started understanding why. It wasn't my fault. You know how everything went down, and I realized that God has a plan. God has a plan. And when I was born, this was a part of my journey, it's part of my destiny. I go on TV. My first time ever on TV, you know, I did the Morris show. And out of all the things I go on TV for, I went on TV for men, you know. Yeah, domestic no, violence, yeah. abusive men. Yeah, that's right. And I, all my life I've been struggling not to be like my dad, not to do some of the things my mom did. Cause like, I, I never ever talked about my mom, you know, she's not a bad person. You know, she'll tell you just like anybody, just like me and you as parents, she made mistakes. Everybody made mistakes. I didn't want to beat him. I wanted to defend myself. But it's crazy because now, I had a whole different mind frame. When I thought when I would die, I would see him and still be scared. Pops, I'm not afraid no more. I'm not afraid no more. There's nothing to be afraid of. Motivation to me was that one day if I see him, he can never beat us again. He can never hurt us again. 
that I could really stand up to him and I could really show him, you will never and have never been stronger than me. Because of what you did, I've done the opposite. Even when people teach you wrong, they can teach you right. I learned so much right from his wrong. I learned so much right from his wrong. That's powerful. And I always said to myself, what would I do if I seen my pops again? What would I do? I always said to myself, would it be, I'm sorry? Would it be tears? I now know what I, I know what it would be possible. None of the above. My main focus right now, if I ever seen my dad again, I would say, what's up?